Let's talk about alpha decay. Alpha decay is one type of radioactive decay that atoms can do. As we said earlier, atoms do radioactive decay because they don't like their lives. There's something that they don't like about themselves. They're super unstable, and they want to change this to become happier, to become more stable. When we're talking about atoms, it's the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus that determines whether the atom is stable or not. So when they do radioactive decay, they want to change that number of protons and neutrons. Let's look at what happens in alpha decay. In alpha decay, an atom with a nucleus that is just too big, that's what it is unhappy about, spits out two neutrons and two protons in order to slim down. These two neutrons and two protons, they come together and they make up what is called an alpha part. So we have this unhappy atom that wants to slim down, spits out two protons and neutrons, they go flying out into space, and we call that an alpha particle. So let's take a look at how we write some chemical equations that involve alpha decay. Okay? Let's start here with uranium. 233. You'll see that I use this type of notation that we call isotope notation. Let's just review this really quickly, all right? So I write something like U23392. The U is the chemical symbol, and then there are two numbers here. The lower number here, 92, is the atomic number, and it tells me, in this atom of uranium, how many protons there are. Okay? Now this top number, don't make a common mistake, this top number is not the number of neutrons, but this top number represents the mass number, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So that's what's going on up here. So uranium is going to undergo alpha decay. In order to find out what's going to happen, let's keep track of the protons and neutrons as they change over the course of this decay process. Okay. So neutrons and protons. Protons, it's easy to find out how many are in there because I just use this number here, the atomic number, 92 protons. What about the number of neutrons? Well, the mass number here isn't the number of neutrons, but it's the number of neutrons and protons. And since I know the number of protons, I can subtract this number from this number, and that leaves me with the number of neutrons that I have. So when I do 233 minus 92, I end up with 141 neutrons. Okay, so now after this guy here undergoes um, alpha decay, he or she, I don't really know what the gender of this atom is, this guy or this girl is going to shoot out two protons and two neutrons. So that means that after alpha decay happens, that's what this arrow indicates, I'm going to have two fewer protons in my nucleus. So I'm going to go from 92 down to 90. Okay, so now I have 90 protons. And I used to have 141 neutrons, and now I'm going to have 139 neutrons when I'm finished. Now I want to write a symbol of what I get, just like the symbol of what I started with here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to find out what element this changes into. That's right, it changes. Because remember that the atomic number, the number of protons that are in an atom's nucleus, determines what type of atom it is. Here, this guy had 92 protons, which made it uranium. But it spit two of those protons out. So now the atomic number of the new atom that we get, after it spits those out, is 90. So it's not going to be uranium anymore, because the atomic number has changed. What i got to do is i got to go to my periodic table, and i got to find out which of my elements has an atomic number of 90. So I take a look at the periodic table, and what I'm going to find out is that thorium here is atomic number 90. Thorium, as you may know, is named after Thor, the Norse god of thunder. So thorium here has an atomic number of 90. And if you looked on the periodic table and tried to find it, you may have had a little bit of trouble, because thorium is one of the actinides that lives in this row down here underneath the main periodic table. So this is where you'd find it. Anyway, I go to the periodic table, and I find out that it's thorium that has an atomic number of 90, so that TH, thorium, is what I'm going to end up with. Now, my atomic number is 90, that's easy, but I want to get my mass number. In order to do that, I'm going to have to add up the number of protons 
and the number of neutrons, and I'm going to get 229. And now I have to write the alpha particle. I have to account for these two neutrons and two protons that get spit out of the atom. And I write this as 42HE. This is one way that you can write an alpha particle, or you can also write it like this. You can do 42 with this, which is the lowercase Greek letter for alpha. And either way, the neutrons and protons on an alpha particle, you already know what the deal is here. It's two neutrons and two protons. Okay. So uranium spits out two protons and two neutrons. We get thorium, and we also get an alpha particle here. Let's go on to another problem. This problem is going to be a little bit different because we're going to know what we end up with, but we're going to have to figure out what we start with. Problems like this often show up in tests and in textbooks. So we're starting with a question mark that undergoes alpha decay, and then it gives us two things. One of these you already know is an alpha particle. That's how we write an alpha particle. Um, and then we get an atom of Pa, which is proactinium. Let me check that. Proactinium. Okay. So now we're going to have to work backwards here. All right. We know that the alpha particle has two neutrons and two protons in it because that's here our definition of alpha decay. Let's look at this atom of proactinium. It's hard to say. And find out our neutrons and protons here. We know that since this represents the atomic number, that this guy has 91 protons in it. And in order to find the number of neutrons, we do 233 minus 91, because this was a mass number. And that's going to give us 142. That's what we ended up with. So what did we start with? Well, since we know that alpha decay means that you spit out two protons and neutrons, we know that before the alpha decay happened, we had to have two more protons in the nucleus. So this, instead of being 91, is going to be 93. And the neutrons, instead of being 142, are going to be 144. So let's figure out what should be in place of this question mark here. First of all, what type of atom is it? What's the element going to be? What's the symbol? I've got to look on the periodic table and find out what has an atomic number of 93. Turns out that it's Neptunian, named after the planet Neptune, because Uranium is named after the planet Uranus, so this is just like the next one. So anyway, we now know that we're dealing with Neptunian, so let's go ahead and put that in. So it's going to be NP, the atomic number is going to be 93, and then the mass number is going to be the protons plus the neutrons, and that's going to be 237. So this is what we start with, and this is what we end up with. Okay? Now look, let's take a look at what's going on here with the equation in alpha decay. There are two things that are changing. We have the mass number, and that in this example goes from 237 down to 233. So the mass number decreases by 4, and the atomic number goes from 93 to 91. All right? This always happens whenever we're doing alpha decay. So we can say that the mass number goes down by 4, and the atomic number always goes down by 2. There are abbreviations for mass number and atomic number, and these get used in textbooks all the time. Sometimes I think just to confuse people, just to like make it seem even trickier. Okay? But we can abbreviate mass number by A. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because atomic number starts with A. I don't know how they pick these things. It's just to confuse you. So sometimes when um, there, there's stuff written about alpha decay in like a textbook, it'll just sum it up by saying A minus 4, which means that the mass number goes down by 4, and then it will say Z, that's the abbreviation for atomic number. That makes a lot of sense too, right, because there are a lot of Z's in, in the word atomic. The atomic number goes down by 2. So sometimes when you're seeing things on alpha decay, you might see it abbreviated by A minus 4 and Z minus 2, but hey, you know what that means now. Okay, I want to do two more practice problems, and I want to do a shortcut so you don't always have to calculate the number of protons and the number of neutrons in each atom in one of these decay equations. So let's check them out. We start with polonium, 208, 84, and we want to know 
what we get after it does alpha decay. Okay? The first thing that we can do is we can write our alpha particle here. And now instead of having to go through all the protons and neutrons and what we start with and end with, let's just keep these rules in mind. Okay? The mass number is going to go down by 4, so we're going to get 204. And the atomic number is going to go down by 2, so now we get 82. So now here's the question, what element is this going to be? Well, just as before, we look on the periodic table to find the element that has an atomic number of 82. And it turns out that that's good old lead, PB. PB stands for plumbus, which was the Latin word for lead. You know, it's confusing because there's not a whole lot of PB in the word lead. So anyway, we know that the symbol here should be PB. And check this out. This is important. Notice that we don't lose or gain any neutrons or protons during this equation, right? We have 84 here, we have 82 in the lead, and then we have 2 in the alpha particle. So they all add up. They all equal each other before and after. And the same is true with the numbers of neutrons and protons together. We add the 4 neutrons and protons with the 204 protons and neutrons in lead, and we get the 208 protons and neutrons in polonium. So nothing is lost from beginning to end, and we can add them all up and see that both sides equal each other. Okay? Let's do one more. Let's do one more of those kind of backwards problems where we have to figure out what we started with. Okay? So we're starting with a question mark here. The question mark undergoes alpha decay, and we get two things. We get radon, 86, and then we get our good old alpha particle. So what did we start with? Well, based on these rules here, we can say that the mass number from beginning to end had to go down by 8, which means that to begin with, I mean to go down by 4, to go down by 4, ugh. So that means that to start with, it would have had to be 4 higher than this. So we're going to do 222 is the number of protons and neutrons, and the atomic number, the number of protons, used to be 2 higher before 2 of those got spit out in the alpha particle. So we have 86 here. We're going to have 88 in what we started with. What is the symbol that's going to go here? We're going to look onto the periodic table to find the element that has 88, and that is radium here, Ra. Here's the equation for radium's alpha decay, and we can see that all the protons add up, beginning and end, and the protons and neutrons all add up from beginning to end. So that is how you do alpha decay, the easy way which I just showed, and um, the more detailed way that we did at the beginning. Even when you're using the shortcut though, keep in mind what's actually going on. And that's this atom is spitting out two protons and neutrons. And if that's all you learn, if that's all you remember, you'll be fine. Just memorize that and then you can figure out any of these problems based just on that information.